All right, everyone, welcome back to the channel. So on today's video, we're gonna do kind of an expanded video of one that I did a couple years ago. So a couple years ago, I did a replaceable blade knife video. And I got a lot of views and a lot of questions regarding that video on different handles, different blades, things like that. So in this video, I took a look at about nine different handles and about eight different blades on whether these blades fit the certain handles. And so one of the big things you always get is, does X blade fit Y handle? And that's something that I really wanted to look at, is I wanted to actually take each one of these blades and physically put them on the handle in the video to see if they actually locked. So as I go through this, you're going to see that. It kind of draws the video out a little bit. So this video is about 25 minutes long, so hang in there. Um, so some of the video or the blades that we're going to look at in this video are like the 22 series. So we have the 22 and the 22 XT. And we're going to take a look at various 60 series blades, which is like the 60A, 60 XT, and then different manufacturers of 60 series blades because not all manufacturers will fit even though it is a 60 series blade. We're also going to look at the 70A and some of the specialty blades like the Havlon um, gut hook, the Havlon bone saw, and the two from Taito being the fillet blade and the spork. And so another thing we look at in there is we take a look at the clamshell because blade removal, especially with bloody wet hands, things like that can be dicey. We all know we can use pliers, but we don't really don't want to carry pliers all the time. So we look at the little clamshell for our, by Havlon that they sell, um, obviously designed to fit around the blade. We'll take a look at that with each one of these handles. So as I go through these handles, um, I'm going to try to remember to put a timestamp up here of each handle so that if you wanted to look at one or two specific handles, you can kind of jump ahead in the video to take a look at that. I'll have a little bit of information at the very end, so tune into the end for that. So one of the first knives we're going to take a look at, this is the Kestrel Knives Mountain Scalpel Knife. This knife is actually advertised as being the lightest weight replaceable blade knife there is. And when we get into the video, you may see that that may not be true. The next one we take a look at is the Taito T1.1. This one has the grip skins on it. Now, one interesting thing about the grip skins is that underneath of the skins, you can actually put a 22 series blade in the handle here um, underneath of the grip skin, so it kind of protects it from that. This is one got a lot of requests for. This is actually just the ergonomics handle. This is just a number eight scalpel handle that fits on here as well. So it's really cheap. They come about five to seven bucks off Amazon. You can also get them from Havlon for about eight bucks as well. You see my other video, you'll know this is one that I really like. This is the Gerber Vitable Replaceable Blade Knife. This one has an interesting blade removal technique. Um, so this is one we'll take a look at as well. Next, we have the Kershaw. This is the Lone Rock RBK. This is actually one you have to buy the entire knife kit, and then this comes in the handle. This is an injection molded plastic handle. and You can see it's pretty flexible as well. Um, does have a lot of durability. The next up is another really light knife that we take a look at. This is the McGinnis Customs Orleans replaceable blade knife. This knife is interesting as it's carbon fiber and then it actually has a metal boss on here unlike the Kershaw that we look at which is all plastic. So this one's actually like a three piece design, um, really interesting design for that. The next is the Civilware IBK interchangeable blade knife. Again, this one has um, some slight scales to the side of it. And then we have the Taito T1 or the TI, so the titanium version, um, better ergonomics to me than over the 1.1, uh, another great knife from Taito. And the last, this is one that I really debated on whether putting into this video or not. This is the Columbia River Knife and Tool PDK Precision Disposable Kit or disp Precision Disposable Knife. This blade actually does not come off. It is actually molded on here, hence the disposable part of that. So you're gonna see during this video, you're gonna see I actually wear gloves on my hands. Um, typically when you're dealing with these knives, you should be wearing gloves, this is my little rant disclaimer. Um, always wear your gloves, zoonotic diseases you can get from various different wildlife species. So you really wanna be sure to wear your gloves. So I wear my gloves during this video because if I'm typically gonna be handling these handles and these blades, I'm going to be having gloves on. So I wanted to make sure that I could get these blades on and off with gloves on in this video. So without any further ado, we're gonna jump right into this. Here are the knives. All right, so the first knife we're gonna take a look at, this is the Kestrel knives. This is the Mountain Scalpel knife. Um, you can see it comes with a Kydex sheath. I added this belt clip on, so kind of ignore it. One thing I wanted to point out about the sheath, you can see the small hole up here. Uh, this is a really interesting design. It's a hole in one side of the sheath. And so when the knife is in the sheath, you'll be able to see if there is a blade on the knife while it's in the sheath or not. I just kind of think that's an interesting thing they did. Uh, little things like that add up. So again, this is the Mountain Scalpel from Kestrel knives, this knife is going to run you about $69. Um, they specify that this is the largest, 
the lightest replaceable blade knife on the market. It comes in at 0.66 ounces. Uh, we'll find out pretty quick that that is not the case. It is not the lightest knife on the market. They specify also that it is designed specifically for the 60A series of knives or blades. So let's look at the overall handle length here. We look at the handle length that's gonna come in at four and a quarter inches. So depending on how big of a hand you have, may fit you nicely. One other thing to note is how thin this knife is uh, right up here at the throat. This knife's only about three eighths of an inch wide. 22 series of blade. This is the thinnest blade we're gonna look at. You can see it does lock on, but one thing to note with the Kestrel is how they machined this recess back here. A lot of blades are gonna be touching this or may not even fit inside of this recess, but you can see this 22 blade does. Moving to the 22 XT, you can see, looks like it locks on, but again, if you look right back here at the very back, you can actually see this blade kicks out. So it does not fit in there due to the recess and the way they cut the recess. Uh, with the XT blades, XT references the blunt tip, slightly thicker than the 22 series. Let's see if we can get this off, because it's on pretty tight. There we go. This is a 60 blade branded by Weeby Knives. Again, it locks on, but it's touching in two different spots back here, but you can see that it is locked on back here. This is a Cincinnati Surgical 60. And that's about as far as I've got it forced on. You can see got it forced on, took a little bit of force to get that on and fits on there. Um, I'm not sure I would comfortably do that. One thing to point out about the Cincinnati Surgical is the cutting edge starts about a half to three quarters of an inch up the blade. So you actually have shorter cutting surface with the Cincinnati Surgical. Also makes blade removal a little nicer because you don't have to worry about the cutting edge being right up against your hand. This is the Havlon 60. This is probably the most common blade that people have. Fits nice, very little wiggle. That's one thing I will say about the Kestrel knife compared to the other knives that we'll look at is side to side wiggle of the Kestrel is less with all blades. This is a Havlon 60A. This is what they said it was machined for. And again, you look right back here at the back and man, that's a tight fit in that recess. Uh, the A's reference the small tab that you have at the bottom of the blade to make blade removal easier. So similar to what the Cincinnati Surgical is, but with a tab. This is the 60 XT from Havlon. Again, fits nicely, very little wiggle. And for some reason on the 60 series, you don't get the blunt tip with the XTs. This is the 70A from Havlon. Again, you can see fits nicely. Now, one thing we're gonna look at is we get a lot of questions about blade removal. So this is the Havlon clamshell blade removal tool. We're gonna to use all of the 70 series we're gonna look at in all these knives to remove the blade with this clamshell. So clamshell's designed, set the knife in there, snap it closed, and then it says press right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna press right there. And what you wanna see is this right here. You wanna see that knife blade separate from the handle. So when that happens, we're simply gonna push forward my thumb while holding onto the handle. And you can see it actually doesn't fully remove this. We're gonna try this one again just to see. I know it should get it maybe lined up a little bit better, push harder. There we go, it just wasn't squeezing together hard enough. So that's the thing, gotta squeeze hard with this, but this blade removing tool does work with the Kestrel handle. So moving on to some of the specialty blades. This is a gut hook from Havilon. Fits in there nicely and you can see a little bit of difference in how it fits. There's a little bit of space down here, so that's a good thing to the bone saw blade. Get it lined up here. Locks on nicely. The Taito or Tito Osprey fillet blade. And you can see I can't even get the boss in the slot in the Taito blade. So one thing to note with the Taito blades is this cut is slightly narrower than on the rest of the blades. So this is gonna be a common theme you're gonna see is you won't be able to get the boss in. This is the Taito Spork. Again, doesn't even fit in there. Overall, 
really good handle. I wish it would take the Taito blades like the Taito fillet blade. I think this would make a great bird and trout knife. Uh, one thing to note, it is very thin, skeletonized, uh, titanium, has good jimping all along the knife that you can see. Overall, really good knife, good handle if you're into the small, minimalist kind of things. Hand fatigue will be an issue with this knife over time. This is the Kestrel Mountain Scalpel. All right, so the next knife we're going to take a look at, this is the Taito Knives T1.1 with grip skins. The knife is going to run you $59.99. The grip skins are going to be $39.99. I like the grip skins to give you a little more girth and better indexing on the handle. You'll notice the Kydex sheath here. Nothing special about it. Go ahead and set it aside. One thing to note with the grip skins is if you were to remove these two screws here, there's actually space for a 22 series blade to fit in between there. You also still have the ability to access the lanyard hole. This knife here, gonna weigh in, this could be a little bit heavier than without the scales, weighs in at 1.7 ounces with the scales. If we look at the usable handle length here on this knife, we're looking right at four and three eighths of an inch basically, so just under four and a half inches for the total working handle length on this. Jump into the blades, the 22. Again, this is the thinnest blade. So it will almost always have wiggle in it. Fits on there, locks on there well. The 22 XT. You can hear it locks in and clicks very well. Very little movement to this. One thing to note about the Taito knives is you'll notice down here there's basically no room to remove the blade from the edge side, but if you look at the back and the spine side, there is enough of a lip back here. It actually allows you to remove the blade away from the cutting edge, which to me is a good safety feature. Uh, and they did a little bit better of this in the titanium version. This is the 60 series from Weeby Knives. Again, locks on nicely. The Cincinnati Surgical 60. You can see it's a little tight. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it off and see, make sure. That's about as far as I can get that Cincinnati surgical blade on, so it will not lock on here. The Havlon series of 60 blade locks on very little side to side play, locks on very well. The Havlon 60A. Again, the A references the small tab down here at the bottom of the blade for blade removal with the Taito knives though. It basically renders that pointless because you remove the blade from the back. This is the 60XT. Again, locks on nicely. The 70A fits, locks on. Again, with the 70s, we're going to look at the Havilon clamshell blade removal tool. So I'm going to set the blade in here, clamp it. Again, we're going to press really hard right here, and what we want to see is we want to see that separation from the handle and the blade. Pops out very easily, so the clamshell does work with the Taito 1.1. The specialty blade, this is the Havlon gut hook, locks on. The Havlon bone saw, locks on. Does have a little bit of play side to side with that blade. The Taito fillet blade locks on nicely. Again, this does have the large tab down here, so you could remove it from the bottom or from the top. And then the Taito spork locks on nicely. So with the spork on, a lot of people ask, what's the total length? We're looking at right around nine inches total length of that so you will be able to reach the bottom of the Mountain House Meals. It's the Taito 1.1 knife. Really like it. I like it even more with the grip scales on it compared to without. That's why I keep the grip scales on it. Overall, really good knife from Taito. All right, so the next knife we're gonna take a look at, this is the other Taito knife. This is the Taito TI, obviously standing for titanium. You can see Black's Kydex sheath. I did add a little thumb well up here at the top to make sheath removal easier. 
This knife is gonna be the most expensive knife we're gonna look at. This knife is gonna run right around 129. You can't find it on sale occasionally. Comes in at 0.42 ounces. Overall handle length of this knife, we're looking right at basically four and a quarter inches. So pretty good handle length, um, good design. One thing to notice on the Taito knife, especially the TI, is this triangular section that comes down below the boss. And we'll look at this more once we start looking at blades. So the 22 blade fits in, does have a little bit of rattle. Again, this is the thinnest blade we will look at. The 22 XT, again, locks on nicely. And you can see this triangular section here makes blade removal from the sharp side or the belly of the knife almost impossible it kind of forces you to remove them from the back which in my opinion is a good thing the 60 from weeby knives again locks on nicely no rattle the cincinnati surgical 60 locks on has just a little bit of rattle to it The 60 series from Havilon locks on, fits well. The 60A, again, the A references the tab down here, but with the TI, you can't even get to that tab to get the blade off. You have to remove it from the back. The 60XT fits nicely, just a little bit of rattle to it. Then the 70A, again the A references the tab, the 70 does have the blunt tip, but we're going to look at removing it with the Havlon blade removal tool. And again, due to this triangular piece that really sticks out here, we're going to kind of pull this and shift it back until we can get that all lined up in the gap. Again, we're going to squeeze on it. I don't see a whole lot of separation between the blade okay there we do if i pull away on the blade just a little bit but doesn't look like it's going to work try it one more time just to see all right get everything lined up we got the separation and it's not going to work and that's due to the extra friction between the boss and the blade here this blade's probably going to be a little bit difficult to take off yep so just because it you have separation doesn't always mean it's going to work. Moving on to the specialties, we're going to look at the gut hook from Havilon. Locks on nicely. Does have a fair bit of play to the blade. The bone saw locks on nicely. Again, just a little bit of play to it. To the Taito fillet blade, which I'm assuming is going to fit. Fits nicely overall. Great looking blade with that on there. The flay blade does have the tab down here at the bottom, or you can remove it from the back. I always prefer to remove it from the back when I can. And the Taito Spork locks on nicely. Overall length of the spork, we're looking at right at nine inches overall length. So again, you will be able to reach to the bottom of your mountain house meals. Overall, to me, probably my favorite knife that we've looked at. I uh, really like the ergonomics of it, the shape, the design of the handle. I do wish they would make some grip skins for this one as well. Maybe some type of bulbous grip skins. Uh, just add a little bit of weight to give me a little bit more comfort in my hand when I grip this. I really like the design here with the Boss. I think it's by far the best design that we have. Also being able to remove the blade from the back. Again, this is the Taito or Tito TI knife. All right, so the next knife we're gonna take a look at, this is the Gerber Vital. Again, this is the fixed blade version of this knife. They do send this knife with a little blade protector to slide over the blade to store it like this. They also now sell a sheath for this that's I believe about five bucks. This knife is gonna run you about $40 online. Overall weight of this knife, it's gonna be a little bit heavier than most, comes in at 1.5 ounces basically. 
has a pretty good rubberized handle on it. When we look at the overall working length of this handle, we're looking right at four inches basically on this handle. Again, has a pretty good rubberized handle, some rubber jimping back here, fits the hand well. Um, has the most unique blade removal system, so it has a small button here that you depress which unlocks the blades. This knife will be the most pickiest for blade that we will look at. This is a 22, you can see it fits, locks on. I'm gonna pull on against on a lot of these knives to show that blades can pop off of this knife. And so you can see the 22 does fit, does lock, but is prone to popping off. This is the 22 XT. Force that blade on there a little bit, locks on. One thing to note with the 22 series is due to how thick this is back here, you lose a lot of cutting surface back here. You can still cut, as you can see the sharp edge of the blade right there, but it's just one thing to remember, you don't really have a whole lot of working edge back here. So again, I'm gonna pull on this 22 XT. You can see it's on there firmly, depress the button, and wiggle this blade a little bit, and it will come off. So the 22 XT does work, but it is a tight fit. This is the Weeby 60. Again, fits on there, but when we look at it from the top, you can tell that it's not fully locked in place. There we pushed it over, but you can see now the blade is not on. So pull on this blade and it's probably gonna pop off. That is the Weeby 60. The Cincinnati Surgical 60. Again, feels like it pops on when we look at it from the top. We can see that it's not all the way in place. And so then a really good pull and this knife blade is gonna come off. Moving to the Havlon 60. Again, that one feels like it locked on. When we look at it from the top, we can see that blade locked on nicely. Pull on this is not gonna come off. So this blade will fit the 60 from Havlon, only in the 60. This is the 60A from Havlon. Again, it felt like it clicked. We looked at it, oh, it looks pretty close. Looks like it would fit, push up against that. Not coming anywhere depress this and it removes. So it does fit the 60A with just a little bit of force. This is the 60XT from Havilon. Fits very easily, very nicely. And the 70, again, it feels like it locked on. Looked at it from the top, it looks pretty close. Looks like it locks. Again, we would try the clamshell with this, but we can tell right off the bat that with all of this up here, there's no way it's going to work with the clamshell. So go ahead and remove that 70. Moving on to the specialty blades. This is the gut hook from Havlon. Again, looks like it fits, but if you look at it from the top, it doesn't quite close. Push that out and it looks like it might lock. So you gotta be careful, especially with the gut hooks the bone saw from Havilon. And we can see right here, as we start to push this back, it's making contact with the protective stud that's up here. So it starts to turn the blade at a downward angle. It is not gonna fit on there. The Taito fillet blade, you can see I can't even get the boss started into the slot from the Taito's. Again, that's gonna be a common theme with Taito's. They make their cut slightly different on their blades. The Taito Spork, the same thing. You can also see it's starting to make contact already with the protective stud. Overall, it's got a pretty good handle. It is extremely picky on the blades and you have to make sure that it is firmly secured with the mechanism back here. It does fit some of the 60 series, it fits some very well. If you have a surplus of those, this handle might be good for you. Again, this is the Gerber Vital Fixed Blade. All right, so the next handle we're gonna take a look at, this is the number eight scalpel handle. So this is your basic run-of-the-mill scalpel handle. Uh, these are relatively cheap, run about anywhere from three to eight bucks online. I think you can buy them from Havlon's website for about four bucks. Uh, you can see it comes in at 0.9 ounces, so right around an ounce for that. Workable handle length of this knife is you're looking right around four and a half inches. And you'll notice I've made some modifications to my handle. I added a slight thumb well back here as well as an index finger well to get my fingers in 
to help me hold on to this knife while I'm working on it. It is a very hard, slick plastic handle, some slight texturing up here at the front. This is a 22 blade, fits, but you can see it's extremely loose. Again, that is the thinnest blade we will look at, the 22 XT. A little bit of force goes on. You can hear no rattle to that blade. The Weeby 60 blade. A little bit of force, try it again. There it goes, locked on. Here a little bit of vertical play, not much horizontal play in it. Again, this is another one due to the thin design of the boss right here, that you can remove blades from the front or the back depending on how you prefer it. The Cincinnati Surgical 60, there it goes, locks on. No rattle, a little bit vertical. The Havlon 60 blade. Again, this is pretty much what everybody has. Again, locks on, quite a bit of vertical play, and you can hear the rattle to that. The Havlon 60A. Again, the A's reference the tab on the bottom of the blade for blade removal. Locks on. Locks a little better than others, not much play to that. This is the 60XT from Havilon. Locks, and you can hear quite a bit of play to this. The 70A. And so you can see a couple of these times I've tried to get the blade on and it hasn't seated, but the second time it has. This is the construction of the boss in this. So again, with these 70s, we're gonna take a look at the clamshell removal tool. We're gonna set this in, clamp it in, and what we wanna see is we wanna see separation. We can obviously see a good separation there. So this should work. Doesn't work, try it again, push harder. Still doesn't work. One more time here, because it should work. Nope, not gonna work on the scalpel handle. And that's because that blade was on there pretty snug. Moving on to the specialties. This is the gut hook from Havlon. Fits. Looking at the bone saw from Havlon. Again, fits, but has quite a bit of rattle to it. The Taito Osprey fillet blade. It actually goes on and locks, surprisingly. Um, that's actually honestly surprising to me. Then the Taito Spork. Again, I'm putting a lot of pressure on that, and you can see I'm making contact right back here, so that's not going to fit the Spork handle. Overall, for the price, it's okay. Um, you can tell there is some definite machining differences up here in the front where the blades go on. A lot of blades are really loose. Some blades are really tight. One thing I will note with this particular one that I have is it is actually bowed this way. So when a lot of these blades are attached, it's actually narrower at the back than it is in the middle in the front. So if you were to apply torque to the blade and the blade would pop off, it is actually relatively easy for some of these blades to come off very easily. Overall, cheap $3.50 option. You can throw it in your bag, have in case of emergency. It would not be a go-to for any or every deer that I skinned, that is for sure. This is the number eight scalpel handle. All right, so the next knife we're gonna take a look at, this is the Civil Wear IBK interchangeable blade knife. You can see the sheath is a Velcro. Nylon has a Velcro belt loop in the back. This one has green scales. You can remove the scales and run just the skeletonized handle. I obviously prefer the scales if it has scales. Good finger well, relatively short handle. This knife is gonna run you about 100 bucks. Weight on this weighs in at 1.7 ounces, so a little bit heavier than most. And then when we look at the usable handle area here, we're looking at right at four inches for the handle. One interesting thing about this knife, it has some odd jimping up here underneath of the front. It's just a really weird place for jimping to me. The 22 blade 
Fits, does not fit extremely well, has quite a bit of play to it. The 22 XT, fits and locks on. The Weeby 60, locks on nicely. The Cincinnati Surgical, so this is actually the blade that they send with this handle. Locks on nicely, very little play. The Havlon 60, fits nicely. Again, with this, the thin, the thin, how thin the boss is right up here, you can take the blade off from the front side or the back side. I will always prefer to take it off from the back side if that is an option. This is the 60A from Havlon. Locks nicely. Again, the A refers to the small tab down here at the bottom to be able to remove the blade with. The 60XT from Havilon locks on. Does have a little bit of play. Then the 70A locks on. Again, we're going to use the plastic clamshell to remove blades on the 70s. We're going to clamp it. Again, we're going to look for good separation here. We looks like we have it and pops right off. Again, just because we have separation doesn't mean it's always going to work. We also need to not have a lot of friction on the boss. The Havlon gut hook fits on nicely. The saw blade from Havilon locks on. The Taito fillet blade. It looks like it locks on, but if you actually look at the back here, you can see the blade is not fully seated. The boss is slightly too long for this blade. So all I gotta do is merely pull, and you're gonna see that blade comes off. Then the Taito spork, I imagine would be the same way. Yep, it does not lock. So you look at it, it does not lock on completely. Given if you were just eating dinner, I don't know that that would be that big of an issue. Just a simple pull and it comes off. This is the Civilware IBK interchangeable blade knife. Overall, pretty good knife. I like having scales to it. The knife is relatively heavy for what it is. Good indexing on the handle. Fits well. I will say in my use with this knife, um, I do not recall all the blades I used, but I do know that I did have issues with blades staying on here. They were extremely loose and they would have prone and be tended to fall off when I was cutting. So that is the Civilware IBK. All right, so the next knife we're gonna take a look at, this one's kind of interesting. This is the Columbia River Knife and Tool PDK, Precision Disposable Kit. So this comes with the injection molded handle and the plastic cover here. And then it actually comes with a 60 series blade, but this blade is molded onto the handle. So you cannot replace this. I debated on whether to include this knife in this review or not, but it's actually saved my butt a few times because handle being always molded to the blade. I've always have them, throw them in my truck glove box. They're always there when I need them. No worry about running out of blades or forgetting blades. So weight of this comes in at 0.39 ounces, uh, 0.4 ounces there. So 0.4 ounces usable handle length let's get this ruler flipped around here we're going to be looking at right at three and three quarters of an inch for usable handle length again there's going to be any testing blades because you cannot remove this blade this comes in a four pack with a couple pair of gloves for around twenty dollars i think you can actually find them more closer to ten now i actually think they discontinued this knife to be exact um, but I included this because like I said, it has saved my butt a few times when I have ran out of blades or was not expecting to need a knife, but had one of these in my truck available to use. So again, this is the Columbia River Knife and Tool PDK Precision Disposable Kit. All right, so the next handle we're gonna take a look at, this is the Kershaw Lone Rock RBK Buddy Blade. So the only way you can get this handle is you have to buy the Kershaw Lone Rock RBK folding knife. And in the sheath with the folding knife and the blades comes this buddy blade is what they call it. So it's just a injection molded handle. You can pick that up for around $20. You can find them on Amazon sometimes for around 16. Um, so price wise, it's relatively budget if you're just looking for this, but you also get a folding knife as well. 
Again, this is an injection molded plastic handle and it's actually pretty durable for what it is. You can see I'm putting a lot of flex in this handle and it's actually hand handling up to it, no pun intended. Weight, this is gonna be one of the lightest ones we're gonna look at. This comes in just under a quarter of an ounce, 0.23 ounces for that. And then when we look at the workable handle length here, we're looking right at three and a half inches of workable handle length. Moving on to the blades, the 22 fits on there. It does have a little bit of play. Again, that's the thinnest blade we're gonna look at, the 22 XT. Locks on there nicely. The Weeby 60 fits on there as well. One thing to notice with this handle is it's very easy to take the blades on and off. The Cincinnati Surgical Blade locks on, and that has to do with the metal blades against the plastic boss and plastic handle. There's not as much friction as if you were putting it up against a all metal construction knife. This is the 60 series from Havilon, fits nicely. The 60A from Havilon. Again, the A references the small tab on the bottom of the blade. Fits on there nicely. The 60XT from Havilon. Fits on there. And the 70A. Again, with this 70 series, we're gonna look at the Havlon blade removing clamshell. Set it in, snap it again. We wanna see separation from the handle and the blade. Looks like we have that there. I would imagine this would come off and pops off relatively nicely. Moving on to the specialties, we're gonna take a look at the gut hook from Havilon. Again, locks on, has a fair amount of play to it side to side and vertically. The one thing I will say is if you torque this particular blade hard enough as you're pulling out it would come off and I'll get into just a little bit more about that later the saw blade you can see doesn't quite lock on and you can see right back here where they have the slot machined in or injection molded in it doesn't allow that blade to sit in there so when you look at this the blade sticks out in the back just enough so it won't lock on the Taito Osprey fillet blade Slides on, but again, you can see back here in the back where they have this recess for the blades does not fit the Taito blade. We can only assume that it's the same thing for the Sport. And again, yes, you can see it doesn't make it all the way back to lock and it won't set in the recess anyways. Overall, I really like this handle design and layout. The biggest problem to me is you can't buy them by themselves. You have to buy them with the folding knife. So they're again, they're like 16 bucks. If you split the cost, that's eight bucks a piece. Still a little expensive to me. I would like to see Kershaw make these and sell these in bulk where I could buy five or 10 of these at a time for a couple bucks. Really, there's not a whole lot to them. The other big downfall to me is the more you use this knife, the more the slot where the blade goes gets worn out. That's why you see some of the blades go on and off really easy because I've been using this handle for a little over a year now. So that slot up there has widened considerably just from the amount of blades I have put on and taken off of this handle. So again, to me, this is more of a disposable handle. It's gonna run good for a little while and then you're probably gonna have to get rid of it because it won't be able to maintain blades on the boss very well. Overall, to me, awesome handle. They need to sell them in bulk. It is the Kershaw Lone Rock RBK Buddy Blade. All right, so the last handle we're gonna take a look at, this is the McGinnis Customs Orleans Replaceable Blade Knife or RBK. This is a pretty interesting design to me. This is LVA carbon fiber, and then the boss is actually made of either two or three pieces of metal. It is pressed into the carbon fiber up here and then secured by two screws in the back. This is gonna be one of the more expensive knives I think I paid 110 for this knife off Instagram. I actually couldn't find it on his website, um, but I saw it on Instagram and pounced on it. You can see the lightest knife we've looked at at 0.22 ounces, but with that comes a penalty. It is the shortest working handle that we have at three and three eighths of an inch. So if you have big meaty paws, it probably won't fit your hand very well. I have small hands and this fits me pretty well. 
One thing to note, he does have a small ball detent back here just behind the back of the boss and says this is supposed to help with the horizontal movements of the blade. He specifically designed this blade for the 60A series, but this is the 22. Locks on, does have quite a bit of play side to side. Again, that's the thinnest blade we'll look at. The 22 XT. Locks on, again, the XT refers to the blunt tip that we have here. The Weeby 60 blade. Locks on, fits pretty nice. The Cincinnati Surgical Blade. The Cincinnati 60, Cincinnati Surgical 60 blade. And you can see it does not go on. It goes only about that far. Again, this is the benefit of testing all of the blades on all of the handles. Even though it says 60 and it fit a Weeby 60 and will probably fit a Havlon 60, they are not the same. So this is the Havlon 60. Locks on. Has quite a bit of side-to-side -side play in it. This is the Havlon 60A blade. This is what he said he designed the handle for. Again, fits nicely. Again, the A refers to the tab down here at the bottom to make blade removal easier. The 60XT locks on. One thing to note is it almost doesn't lock on due to the recess that he has right here. Um, the blade actually contacts that. So if you look, you can actually see at the very end the blade kicks out because it does not fully set in there, although it is locked on. And then the 70A from Havilon locks on a little bit of play in this blade. And then we'll try the clamshell with this handle. So you can see closed, but there's a huge gap right here. So no matter how hard I press, I don't get any separation. The issue we have with this is the thickness of the back of the blade. The handle right here next to the blade is too thick to fit into the slot that is molded in the handle. So it will not work with the clamshell. Moving to the specialty blades, this is the gut hook. Locks in. A little bit of play in it. The saw blade fits nicely on here. The Taito or Tito Osprey blade and you'll notice I can't even get the boss in the gap. Again that's because Taito makes their blades at a slightly narrower tolerance here so most knives will not fit their blade. And the Spork from Taito is the same way. Overall to me, I really like the design of this handle. I like the layout, um, the carbon fiber. Uh, you could use something like G10 or uh, some maybe a plastic even and do the same thing you've, he's done up here with the metal that is pinned in or pressed in and then screwed on to hold the blades on. To me, really lightweight knife. It's the lightest weight knife that we looked at today. Really good handle design ergonomics. Again, I would like to see scales made for this to make this knife a little bit fatter so that it fits in the hand just a little bit better. Overall to me, really light knife. It's the lightest knife you're gonna look at. Again, it's gonna set you back about $110 from McGinnis Custom Knives. This is the Orleans Replaceable Blade Knife. All right, guys, hopefully you hung in there long enough to make it to this part of the video. That video was pretty long. Uh, it was even longer for me because I didn't get all that done in one take. But here at the end, I kind of wanted to go over kind of my best picks, my top picks, and my budget pick. So for me, probably the best overall knife that there is, um, price, not, a, not necessarily a factor, is going to be the Taito Ti. Really like the ergonomics of this handle. I like the boss design, kind of making you remove the blade from the back. To me, it's one of the safest features to the knife. Really good knife. Um, next, if we look at budget knife, um, probably my run for the budget knife is going to be the Kershaw knives, the Lone Rock series, and that's really because you get two handles. So you get the folding version and the plastic buddy blade for about 26 bucks. Uh, over time, this blade will wear down compared to the folding version, but for 26 bucks to me, it's not that big of an issue. 
uh, really like this handle, especially with a little bit of modifications that I've done to it. And then kind of one that I really like to, to me is kind of a dark horse is the McGinnis Orleans replaceable blade knife. I really like the design of this knife. Obviously this is the lightest knife that we looked at. The boss system that he has up here, so the three part design pressed and then secured in with screws. Uh, I just really liked the ergonomics of this knife for my hand. I have a relatively small hand, but this knife fits me really well. So if you guys seen a knife in here that you want to see more details on, a uh, more specific video on, let me know in the comments down below. Say, hey, I want to see more about this knife or this knife, and I'll try to do maybe a detailed video of that specific knife if I get enough people requesting it. If maybe there's a knife that I missed or a handle that I missed that you want to see, let me know in the comments down below as well, and maybe I'll try to get that knife and use it a little bit and then make a review video specifically for that knife. This one's been a long time coming. I've used these handles for a while. Some of these handles I use for a really long time. Some of them are shorter amount of time. Just to try to get enough field experience with that. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, subscribe, give me a like, share this video. You know, the more videos you get shared out there, the more likely I am to do additional gear review videos like this. So again, guys, thanks for watching.